The head of Germany's largest power utility says investment in renewable energy in the U.S. may be dampened by the coming Trump presidency. Paris-based NG announces its intention to enter the U.K. household power market in 2017. And I interview Calcia Executive Director Bernadette Del Chiaro at the InterSolar North America Conference. It's Monday, November 28th, and this is Power Today. Hello and welcome to Power Today for Monday, November 28th. I'm Cassie Haley. We begin this edition of Power Today in Germany, where the head of that country's largest power utility has stated that investment in renewable energy in the U.S. may be dampened by the coming Trump presidency. Speaking to the German business daily Handelsblatt, Dr. Johannes Tyson said, It is possible that future growth may slow and that the focus will shift again towards coal and oil. But we have seen these shifts in Europe too. Just think about nuclear energy. Tyson said most jobs in the renewables industry were located in states dominated by Republicans, adding any change in legislation would happen very slowly. E.ON, which is Europe's largest electric power utility, has assets amounting to $4.25 billion in the U.S., the world's second biggest market for wind turbines after China, mostly in the form of onshore wind parks. Global renewable stocks fell following Trump's election victory, fueling concerns about the long-term prospects of the industry in the United States. You can read the full story as well as other power news and information from around the globe at PowerEngineeringInt.com. In other power news, Paris-based NG has announced its intention to enter the UK household power market in 2017. Reports are circulating that NG plans to build its own consumer brand as an extension of its business supplying power to British businesses. In a sign of its ambition, NG has recruited a panel of high-powered advisors, including a former energy secretary and former head of the civil service, to help it transition to market. CEO Wilfred Petrie said the company would focus on adding value to basic gas and electricity supplies, including technology to help customers increase energy efficiency. He added in a recent statement, there is more value for us in helping manage energy demand than in supplying the energy itself. We're going to take a short break when Power Today returns my InterSolar North America interview with Bernadette Del Chiaro of Calcia. Power Spotlight is up next. Stay with us. From December 13th through 15th, thousands will be in Orlando for the largest power industry show in the world, PowerGen International 2016. Hello, I'm Cassie Haley, host of the daily power news and information show, Power Today, and I'm here to tell you about a great way to get your message to the PowerGen audience. At this year's show, I'll be conducting content interviews with a select group of companies and thought leaders who recognize the importance of video in marketing their message. These one-on-one -on -one interviews will be featured on Power Today and will then be made available to use in any way you'd like. Power Today airs daily across a broad variety of Penwell sites, including Power Engineering, and has become a known and respected brand within the world of power. We take pride in keeping the power industry informed and telling our viewers about the exciting stories, people, and companies that are moving the industry forward. This is your opportunity to reach the ideal audience and to make sure your message is heard. I've been speaking with Bill Newsom today about Mitsubishi's J-Series gas turbine, the M501J. There is limited time available to schedule your PowerGen interview, so please don't put off locking in what could be your best marketing investment of the year. I'm Cassie Haley. I look forward to speaking with you at PowerGen International. Welcome back. At the InterSolar North America Conference, I caught up with Calcia Executive Director Bernadette Del Chiaro to discuss the current state of solar in California and beyond. Hello, I'm Cassie Haley with Power Today. We're here at InterSolar North America, and I am sitting with Bernadette Del Chiaro. She is the Executive Director of Calcia, who is a key partner here at InterSolar. Thank you for joining me. You're welcome, great to be here. Well, we've all seen a lot of evolution in the solar industry over the last several years. From your vantage point, can you just talk to our viewers a little bit about what you've seen? It's really exciting, actually. I mean, everybody knows about the growth of the market overall. You know, how we have you know, 11 gigawatts of solar now in California, both utility scale and behind the meter rooftop solar. Um, but what little known facts are is just how diversified the market is becoming here in California. 
So some of my favorite facts are, for example, last year in 2015, according to Kambala Analytics, 66% of the residential installs were in neighborhoods that are low and moderate income, less than $55,000 a year. Really? Yeah. So we're seeing the greatest actually uptick in growth in in the residential sector and people who typically have been priced out of this market. And it's just balancing out, and we're basically being able to reach more and more just average Californians and giving them the benefit of solar energy. So that's really exciting. We're also seeing more renters being able to go solar, big growth in the multi-family housing sector in California. Are these the renters themselves or the rent? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a combination. Yeah, say yeah that. exactly. It's it's a combination of um, the building managers being able to co- cover, you know, the common space electrical load, um, and then mm-hmm. some of them are being able to actually deliver the electrons directly to the renters themselves. Mm-hmm. So you know, you hear a lot about uh, renters being blocked out of the market, and in California, we have over five million people living in rental properties. So it's a huge market, mm-hmm. um, and we're working on developing that and tapping into that further. Um, but we're seeing a lot of promising growth there. And then, of mm-hmm. course, other you know, really important sectors like schools and the agricultural community. Um, okay. seeing, we've seen a tenfold growth over the past four years in the farming sector going so really. What do you think have been the key factors to bring California to this point? I think the key thing with California, I mean, obviously, we've got the renewable portfolio standard, which is what's developing all of the utility scale solar and, and creating that market in California. On the other side of uh, the meter, it's really, you know, hands down net metering. Uh, our net metering policy is a really strong one. Mm-hmm. Um, it is allowing, uh, there's some creativity within the, within the net metering policy that allows for farmers and renters uh, mm-hmm. to be able to tap into solar as well as just traditional single roof uh, type buildings. Um, and then just we've got, done a really good job of creating stability in, in our policy. So industry knows and can bank on that California's market is going to be there and it's going to be strong. California is definitely a leader here in North America, but what are you seeing by way of competition now across the United States? It's really great. There's a kind of a very healthy race to the top among other states. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously, we some states we have to write off at the moment, sadly, Nevada and Arizona, um, for example, but there's a lot of states that are really getting into the game. I mean, Minnesota, Missouri, uh, New York, Massachusetts, mm-hmm. uh, there's some of these states that are really uh, really trying to give California a uh, run for the money and mm-hmm. good competition. Um, obviously, I don't think it'll be hard for those states to uh, ever compete with California from a sheer me- you know, megawatt market size. Mm-hmm. Uh, but from a um, you know, amount of solar per capita mm-hmm. um, and just an important growth uh, sector in the eastern side of the United States and in the Midwest, there's some yeah. really promising states. Has the investment tax credit played a role in that? Yeah, the passage and the extension of the investment tax credit uh, out another five years and that victory this past year is tremendous. I mean, Mm -hmm. that gives the entire country that level playing field and that stability, and that's going to benefit both the um, customer side of the meter solar as well as the big utility scale solar. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's been terrific. Um, Is there any caution there? You know, I think we got to just remember that that was a five-year extension, and Mm -hmm. five years will be right will be at us in before no you time. know it yeah so I think we're gonna have to be just be careful be mindful that that's uh, there and you know as many people know uh, it actually steps down uh, for everybody which is good it helps us wean off of the ITC um, and uh, and that should help us uh, prepare for that, that okay. end well, let's talk a little bit about net metering and the effects that that's having right now here in California and and anything you see on the horizon for yeah. North America I mean, obviously, we're we're very pleased with the outcome of our net metering 2.0 uh, policy mm-hmm. here in California. Um, we, we just actually had it roll out in San Diego about two weeks ago, so it's officially uh, on the market, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and so far, we haven't seen too many uh, glitches, and uh, we're, we're really working to get the word out to consumers that it's still a good time and still very financially viable to, to go solar under this new net metering program. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the thing I want to always caution uh, folks in the industry is that uh, it, that was not a finish line. Um, then 3.0 um, is literally right around the corner and we'll, be, we'll start kind of debating that next year and it'll be put in place in 2018. So, so really, really right around the corner. Yeah, very much so. So we've got to focus on deployment and getting all that solar continue to grow, but uh, mm-hmm. we can't rest on our laurels. And and, um, you know, the, the, the opposition and the political, you know, challenges that faced us uh, in M2.0 will probably only uh, get more difficult uh, as we continue to be more successful. 
So we're going to have to double down. So California is leading the way here in America. Um, but there's a lot going on globally in the solar world. If, is there any advice you would give other uh, other industries across different markets and, and the success here in California? Yeah, I mean, I think California is world renowned, I think known for putting in place uh, policies that are two things. One, it focused on market transformation. Mm -hmm. And by the virtue of that, they we, we've done a really good job of putting in place policies that are long term. Um, that provide long-term stability for the industry so that we know that California is a good place to invest in. Mm -hmm. You know, what we've seen in other world markets is more kind of flash in the pan uh, policies that maybe create a huge boom uh, mm -hmm. in the market and in the industry, but then are followed shortly thereafter by a bust. And that is obviously deaf to an industry. Right. So we've managed to avoid those boom, that boom bust cycle and um, our policymakers, uh, you know, actually really understand the importance of that. And so as a result, you know, I think we'll continue to, to be able to build, you know, gradually and slowly, but very, very surely. How important do you think collaboration between the industry leaders and the government officials is to creating those kind of stable policies? Oh, it's, it's absolutely critical that uh, the business community engage directly and personally in politics and policy making. Mm -hmm. um, you know, first of all, uh, policy makers, they work to represent businesses. Businesses are their constituents. Um, so they actually really care to hear about, you know, the people on the ground actually creating those jobs and what their perspective is. Um, but also, you know, we, politics is a bit of a tug of war. And if we aren't, you know, loud and uh, voicing uh, what our needs are, um, you know, it, there's a kind of expression of if you're not on the table at the table, you're on the menu, right? It's a right. little bit like that in politics. You really have to be engaged, and um, that goes for all forms of government, regulatory and legislative. Um, so it's really critical, and and it's critical that individual businesses, you know, the CEOs and and, and the average, you know, the workers all the way down the line, uh, personally get engaged. Are there any concerns in California or across America with the upcoming elections and changes in, in policies and officials here? Thankfully, um, you know, obviously, who, who, who becomes the next president of the United States will affect the industry. It'll mm -hmm. affect our market. Um, although, you know, thankfully with the ITC passed um, under the Obama administration, most of the policies that affect the solar industry really are at the state level. So I think, we'll, you know, I, I, I'm not overly concerned about the outcome. I mean, from a perspective of the California market, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think we'll be fine. And uh, I don't see any major changes. And the, obviously, there won't be any government, you know, governor changes or any kind of level, high level changes in California anytime soon. Well, what are you personally most excited about on the solar horizon in the next few years? That's a good question. Um, one of the initiatives we're working uh, in collaboration with the Center for Sustainable Energy and IREC is a DOE-funded SunShot initiative to really open up, I mentioned earlier, uh, the renter market. Mm -hmm. So there's a, uh, a again, a, a sub-tariff within our net metering tariff here in California that allows for one single solar system on the roof of a multifamily housing, like an apartment building, mm -hmm. uh, to service individual meters. And, um, and we are engaged in a kind of collaborative project to work to figure out what are the barriers to those buildings uh, being able to tap into that uh, mm -hmm. kind of concept and really deliver more electrons to, to those homeowners, uh, I mean, so those renters, sorry. And, you know, again, like I said, five million renters in California. It's a really huge, huge market just in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And um, and we've only scratched the surface. So I'm excited about seeing where that project goes and, and where we can uh, open up that market. Well, I love Calcia and everything that California is doing here for the solar industry. So thank you for taking some time to Welcome. visit with us today. My pleasure. Thanks, Thanks Calcia. That's going to wrap things up for us on Power Today. You can link to the show directly at powertoday.tv, and you can follow me at the Cassie Haley on Twitter. For everyone at Power Today, have a great day. We'll see you back here tomorrow at noon, 11 Central.